Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. Keisha here. If you have not yet subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like the content that I've created for you today. And be sure to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to share your personal experience about what I have to say today. And also, if you find this video helpful, be sure to share it with a couple of your friends that you believe would benefit from this information. So I got a question in my community, or more like a request basically, to create a training around how to turn your side hustle into your main source of income. Like what is actually required to get from point A to point B. And I thought this was a really great question because it's something that I have done myself in going from having a traditional job to creating an online business to having a YouTube channel that creates passive income for me um, without even having that many subscribers. I mean, I think I have 6,500 subscribers right now. So you don't need a ton of subscribers to create passive income on YouTube, but that's for a separate video. Today I'm going to be talking about what's really required to take a side hustle that you currently have. And when I'm talking about side hustle in this instance, I mean you have your own side hustle business. Either you provide some kind of a service, um, like me, I'm a coach, so I provide coaching services online. Either you provide a service, maybe you're a hair hairdresser, or a babysitter, um, whatever it might be for you. Perhaps you have some sort of a product that you sell either online or you have an actual um, physical location that you're trying to build up. Either way, we're going to be talking about what is required to turn that side hustle into a full-time source of income. So the first thing I want to say is stop calling it a side hustle. Stop calling it a side hustle because as long as that sort of terminology and that kind of idea is in your mind, you're going to continue to treat it like a side hustle. And in order to get the side hustle to become an actual main source of income, you have to treat it like it's a legitimate business already. So get it out of your mind that it's a side hustle. If you have to call, just call it my business, actually, because there's a lot more power and intentionality behind business compared to side hustle. Side hustle implies that it's an afterthought, that it's a, like a leftover thing. Like when I'm done with my main source of income, then whatever energy or time or money that I have left over after I've done the more important things, then I can contribute to the side hustle. But if that's the mentality that you have around it, it's going to be very hard for you to build it up into main source of income or it's going to take you an eternity to do it. Now, there's nothing wrong with, you know, if you want to take five to 10 years to build out a side hustle into a main source of income. I'm not here to say that's right or wrong. It's personal preference. Some people really enjoy the slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. But if you're anything like me, I much rather prefer to build something quickly and sustainably. I don't think it has to be one or the other. It doesn't have to take five years to replace your income if you're really focused, if you're very intentional, and if you're treating your business, side hustle, like it's an actual business, which most of you are not, and that's why you're not seeing the kind of income that you wanna see, and you're certainly not gonna be able to see it consistently. So what does it look like when you're not treating your side hustle like an actual business? you're not consistent in it. Meaning some days you work on it, some days you don't. You kind of leave it up to chance. You kind of leave it up to whether or not you feel like it, right? Well, that's not gonna cut it and I'll tell you why. Because you don't, you're not doing that with your main job. If you have a job, you have to show up 40, 50, 60 hours a week, whatever your schedule is. You're expected to contribute that many hours a week, every single week to the job. And if you don't do that, and you don't have a good reason for why you're not doing it, you're gonna get fired, right? So if you're not showing up consistently with X amount of num hours in your side hustle business at this time, and it's all kind of haphazard when I feel like it, when I have the time, oh, I'm too tired today, I'm not gonna work on it. Well, then no wonder why you're not making money, okay? So you have to start approaching this side hustle business as if you're an actual CEO right now. A lot of people are waiting, waiting for their business to grow, waiting for the money to come in, waiting for the clients and the contracts and all of these things before they'll show up as an actual CEO. No, 
Because if you ever hope to get to the point where you actually become a CEO and you're operating your business like it's an actual company, you have to start showing up as that person right now. That's how you're going to attract the clients that are paying you. That's how you're going to attract your customers. That's how you're going to develop a sense of confidence and belief in yourself. So if you're kind of showing up all sloppy and messy and inconsistent and wishy-washy for your side hustle, no, you're not going to attract quality clients and customers because people are attracted to quality and they're attracted to consistency. Aren't you? Like think about yourself as a customer, a potential customer. Let's say you're looking at two different side hustles, side hustle A and side hustle B. Side hustle A, the person is kind of like, a, you know, running their business at home, kind of casual about it. You see them on social media from time to time. You'll see a post from them from time to time. They're not very, they're not presenting themselves very well. When they do show up on camera, they're not really passionate about what they're talking about. You can tell they're really nervous, right? A. Now B, this person, every time you see them, they're, they're focused. They know what they're talking about, right? If they have a website, it's clean, it's organized. If they have products, their products are packaged beautifully. If they have a service, they're able to articulate to you very intelligently what they do, how they can help you, and why you need that service or product. Complete professional. Which of these two side hustles are you going to want to give your business to? Probably the one that's presenting as the professional and qualified CEO, right? Even if they're selling the same thing. Even if the quality of what they're selling is exactly the same. Perception is everything. So when you take a look at your side hustle, what kind of energy do you think people are getting from it? And what are they getting from you? Because whatever energy you're putting out into the world is exactly what you're getting back. So if you're not seeing the kind of income that you want to see in your side hustle, it's all about your energy, your professionalism, how you're approaching this side hustle. Continue to treat it like an afterthought and you will continue to get paid as if you are an afterthought, which is little to no money. Okay? Next thing I want to talk about is we have to be realistic when it comes to business. We all know that most businesses fail. That's, that's a well-known statistic. Everyone knows most businesses fail. Now, take into account within that group of people who fail in business, you have people who have MBAs. You have people who have like vast powerful networks of people that they're, they're networking with and that they're talking to. These people have loans. They have investors, they have teams that have paid professionals working under them, and they still fail with a business plan, with a marketing plan, with money for advertising and all of that. And they still fail, right? So look at yourself who doesn't have any of those things. Now, understand that in order to succeed where people like that have failed, what kind of mindset and energy do you think is going to be required to succeed when you don't even have any of that, right? So what, what that means is you have to be hungry for your success. You have to be hungry for your success. That hunger, that fire, that passion is what is going to make the difference between you and all the other people who fail. And I got to tell you, most people who are starting a business who have a side hustle, they're not hungry. They're not hungry. And the reason why there's a lack of hunger a lot of the times is because you're still too comfortable in your everyday life. So if this is a side hustle, then you, you have another source of income. You probably have a full-time job, or if you don't have a full-time job supporting you, you're in a relationship, you have a partner who's able to take care of the expenses as you're working on your business, or you got student loans that are coming in that are keeping you afloat or whatever it is. If you don't really have that hunger for yourself to build this business, it's because you're too comfortable in your day-to-day -day life, right? So if you're too comfortable, you're not going to have the motivation to get out there. I'll give you a really prime example. Person A who has a full-time job and they have steady income coming in, it's a lot easier for person A to make up excuses for why they're not doing what they need to do in their business. I'll use a really common example. There are a lot of people who are afraid to go on video to promote themselves and their business. They won't go live on, on Facebook or Instagram to talk about what they're selling, right? They'll go live if they're at like a theme park or at a party or at a wedding and having fun. They'll go live all day for that. But they're terrified of going live to talk about their own business. Now, person B, who has no other income coming in, who has their business as their only source of income, 
And the only thing standing between that person and whether or not they pay rent this month is their ability to go live. Don't you think that they're going to get over themselves and go live as often as they have to to make sales? Compared to this person who has a really cushiony excuse of a full-time job or a partner that's supporting them, right? So if you're not seeing the income that you want to see in the side hustle, ask yourself, am I really hungry for this? Do I really want it? Because if you don't have that hunger and you don't have that fire, well, no wonder you're not making the money that you want to make, okay? And that's not to say that if you have a full-time job, you don't have that hunger and that fire, because of course you can. You might be in a position where you're, you have income coming in somewhere else, but you're really sick of that. You're sick of the job or you've been at it long enough, you're ready to move on, so you are motivated. But if you're not doing what you need to do consistently in your business and you're making all kinds of excuses Ask yourself, do you really want what you say that you want? And are you really willing to do what it takes to have it? Because most people are not. Most people are not. Most people come into a business and I don't even know, it's a little bit delusional thinking. I say this with love, but it's true. It's a little bit delusional to think that you can just start a business and then boom, it's going to take off without you having to put hard work into it, to, without you having to put blood, sweat, tears, fail, fall flat on your face hundreds of times, get rejected hundreds of times, have people making fun of you because they don't get what you're doing. If you think you're going to build a successful business without going through any of that and without getting really uncomfortable on a, on a regular basis, you're being delusional and it's not going to happen for you. Okay. I know I'm, I'm giving you some tough love right here, but I see a lot of people coming into the entrepreneurial space and I'm like, how on earth does this, does this person think they're going to make it? How on earth are you going to make it unless you're treating it like this is the real deal for you? OK, so if you have to make yourself a little bit more uncomfortable to light a fire under your ass, then do it. And I don't know what that looks like for you. I don't know if that means like restricting yourself in certain ways so that you have to work towards something as opposed to just like constantly rewarding yourself for doing nothing at all. Like I don't know what that looks like for you. But really consider how comfortable you are right now and whether or not you need to be a little bit more uncomfortable to start making progress. And for a lot of people who are comfortable, that's why they hire a coach, right? Because if you know you don't have that fire under your ass, but you have found somebody, a coach who has the energy that's going to activate you and you're going to get shit done, sometimes that's required, right? And that's why the coaching relationship is so important because when you have that energetic exchange, when you know this person's energy is going to get you to do stuff that maybe another person's energy, it doesn't work for you, then you're going to do what you got to do. I know I got a, I got a call with my coach in two days. I know the last call we talked about me doing X, Y, Z and I haven't done it. I better get to work because I don't want I'm not going to get on that call and tell my coach I haven't done anything, Right. You, sometimes we need somebody who's going to hold us accountable, who's going to ask the tough questions. And I'll tell you what, like when I'm working with someone in the business sense, someone who wants to build a business and we're on a call, like I'm getting to know them. One of the first things I'll ask is how much money do you want to make in your business this month? Right? So I'll get a couple of different responses to that. And depending on the response that I get, that'll tell me a lot about that person, right? Um, recently, I had a client tell me, I, oh, I want to make $1,500 in my business this month. I want to make $1,500 in my business. I already knew that person wasn't hungry. I already knew it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. Again, everyone has their own pace, their own circumstances. But if someone's telling me they only want to make $1,500 in their business, then I know that they're already comfortable in their life. They already have something that they're depending on. So they're not going to be that hungry to do it in their business, right? So if we're approaching a side hustle like it's an actual viable business in the here and now, before it even is that, in order to get it to become that, $1,500 a month isn't going to cut it, right? Could you survive off of $1,500 a month? Some people could, I guess, if they're really tight with their money, but for most of us, that's not enough money. So you need to start approaching your income goals as if this, this side hustle is your only source of income. Now what? Now how would you approach it? Because that kind of approach is what's going to actually get you to making that kind of income where you can replace your full-time income with your side hustle. So that tells me a lot. On the flip side of that, I'll ask somebody how much money you want to make. Let's say they say, I want to make 10 grand, 15 grand. Great. That's a great goal to have. Are you willing to do what it takes to make that money? 
because it's going to be a lot more than posting a couple videos online and, and posting a couple of Instagram posts. People are not going to be flooding your DMs because you put a post out there saying, hey, I'm selling this, I'm doing this, you want to work with me. That's not how it works. So if you want to make 10 grand or even five grand in a month in your side hustle, well, what are you prepared to do to make that? Because it's not going to just come walking into your life. You got to go out there and get it, right? You have to have a really clear strategy for how you're going to get get talking to people. Like, why are people paying attention to you? Why should they? When there's so much competition out in the marketplace, right? Now, I'm not one of those people who believes in there being such a thing as, well, the market is saturated, therefore I can't make it. I don't believe that. You know why? Because every single person on planet Earth is unique, right? Now, I might be selling the same thing as Jackie down the street, but I'm Keisha. Jackie can't do it like Keisha can. I can't do it like Jackie can. And everyone is going to be attracted to my energy or Jackie's energy for different reasons. That's why it doesn't matter how many people are in the marketplace selling the same thing, right? How many, how many bread companies are there? How many companies make bread? They're all thriving and making money, aren't they? <laughs> right? Because we care about what? The company culture. We care about the packaging. We care about the color. We care about the taste. They all taste slightly different. They cost slightly different prices. There's still variety within something like even selling bread. So if you distinguish yourself as an individual, and I'm not going to lie, that's probably one of the most challenging things to do because we're all conditioned to try to fit in and be like everyone else. So trying to find your unique voice and tap into your authentic energy is part of the journey of becoming a successful entrepreneur. It is required. That's something that you will work on in coaching if you decide to hire a coach, hire me as your coach. That's going to set you apart from everyone else. But... If you're a unique individual, you have the potential to be successful in your own business, doing what you love and being yourself and getting paid for it, right? You just have to decide how badly you want it, what you're doing to have, what you're going to be willing to do to have it and how much you're going to show up for yourself in your business. Another reason why people are not making money in their side hustle is you don't have the confidence and belief in yourself. You don't believe in what you're selling. You don't believe in what you're putting out into the marketplace. You don't believe in it. So if you don't believe in what you're doing, why would someone else believe in what you're doing? People are magnetized to confidence and certainty, right? That makes a huge difference. You can have someone who doesn't know, who doesn't know what they're doing or what they're talking about, but if they're confident, if they show up like they're confident, they're going to get paid. They're going to get paid over the person who is more qualified because that person over there is nervous and doesn't believe in themselves. And it shows. So you have to believe in what you're doing before anyone else believes in you. You have to see the long-term vision. You have to be able to lock into that vision of yourself a year from now, five years from now, when you're making the kind of money that you want to be making and your business is thriving. What energy does you, do you have five years down the road? You have to figure out how to bring that into today. Because that's the only way you're going to get there. And where a lot of people fail is you feel like you have to wait to experience something first. As in, well, I'll do X, Y, Z when I'm making enough money to do it. That's the quickest way to fail. That's the quickest way to fail. Prime example, people who have a business and refuse to spend any money whatsoever on their business. Which I think anybody who tells me they don't want to invest in their business. I already know they don't take it seriously. Anybody who's like pin, penny pinching and let me see what I can get for free and let me see how many trainings and all the things I can get without spending any money. If you don't, you won't even spend money in your own business. Why would someone else spend money on your business? Like really think about that. Like when people are telling me, well, hey, my business isn't making any money. One of the first things I want to know is in what ways have you invested monetarily into your business? How much money have you spent in growing this business? 10 out of 10, the people who haven't spent any money are the people who are making, struggling the most, most of the time. And again, it's all about energy. It's not to say that you can't build a decent business, at least in the very beginning stages, small, small time, um, without spending much money. You can certainly do all the things yourself, especially if you're multi-talented like that and you're good at graphic design and you're good at video and you're good at all these things, sure. But again, it's all about energy, right? It's like, okay, well, if I refuse to spend money on myself, what, what am I putting out into the universe? 
What is the universe going to give me more of? People who are refusing to spend money on me. So something to consider. If you're serious about this business, you're going to spend money on your business, period. There's not one business on earth that didn't invest in the business to get it off the ground. Think about a restaurant. If someone's starting a restaurant, don't you think they're going to have to spend money? It doesn't matter what kind of business it is. It it's, Money is required in some way, shape, or form. And if you have an online business, which a lot of people fall into the trap of thinking, oh, well, this business is online, so I don't have any overhead. I don't have to pay rent. I'm not, I don't have a team or, or a staff that I have to pay. So therefore, I don't have to spend any money. That's not true. You have to spend money to invest in the expansion of your mind because it's your mindset that's really going to be determining your income. You can do everything right and have the beautiful website and have all the things and all the videos and everything. But if your mind isn't right, if you don't have the mindset of a successful entrepreneur, it's not going to work. You're still not going to sell anything. Because again, energy rules. And if the energy is not right, you're, nobody's going to buy from you. Even if everything looks picture perfect on the outside. Energy speaks louder than words. So be willing to invest in yourself. Work with a mentor who's done what you want to accomplish, right? Don't be so entitled and arrogant as to thinking like, okay, well, I'm going to be cheap and not spend any money and I'm going to do it all by myself. Doing it all by yourself. No one cares that you do it all by yourself. All anyone cares about is how quickly and efficiently you became successful. And that's going to determine whether or not they want to invest in you. So, okay, do it by yourself and save money all you want to, but then don't be surprised when you're not where you want to be. Period. And if you're someone who's not particularly self-motivated or a self-starter and you're still trying to do it alone, how is that going to work? How is that going to work? So I'm going to see if there's anything else I want to contribute. There, uh, clearly, there's just so much that I can say to this, but I think the main overall theme is that you have to be willing to take radical responsibility for your success, which means you have to be willing to do what it takes. And the fact is, most people are not willing to do what it takes because most people are not willing to get uncomfortable. If you want to do something or if you want to have something you've never had before, which is like what a successful business that a successful side hustle that has now become your full time income. If you've never done it before, don't you think you're going to have to be willing to do things you've never done before to become the person who has that? Most people aren't willing to do it. So just a quick video for you to evaluate where Maybe you might be lacking in some of those areas. Oh, real quick, another thing people do. <laughs> and again, I kind of referred to this earlier, but I see people at opposite ends of the spectrum. People either refuse to do any personal development work at all, as in they just like, just think that they just have the mindset of an entrepreneur, so they should be able to just go out there and make money as an entrepreneur without doing any personal development work, or people who only do personal development work, as in they're stuck in this personal development trap of like, They'll do all, they'll read all the books and watch all the videos and then they'll even hire a coach, but they still won't take action, right? So some, depending on what end of the spectrum you are on, that might be why you're not making any money. And again, on this end of doing pers zero personal development work, a coach factors into that. So if, so if you, I'm going to say most people need a coach or a mentor and not just Uncle Joe down the street that's giving you business advice for free that doesn't count. I'm talking about a paid investment mentor, a high level mentorship or coaching relationship where because you've invested money in it, you're now invested in the process, right? Because again, that's that's why the, the price matters. The more you spend on something, chances are you're going to be more invested in it. Right. Because you're not going to be playing around. If I if you just spent five grand to work with the coach, you're going to show up compared to spending a 100 bucks on Uncle Joe or getting coaching and mentoring from Uncle Joe for free. Right. So the transaction matters. And the more we're willing to invest in ourselves, that's also why we're willing to show up and take action, because now we have money on the line. So we have skin in the game. We have to take it more seriously. So that's that. But people get stuck in this personal development cycle of doing all the watching all the videos, studying all the things. And it's like next thing you know, it's been months, sometimes years, and you're not taking action. Right. So don't be that person who thinks that you're doing something or doing the work because you're doing personal development work. Personal development work is not going to get you paid. That's not making you money. You can read all the books in the world and watch all the YouTube videos in the world, including this one. But if you're not taking action, it doesn't matter. Right. OK, so. I think that's all I have to say 
in this video but i'm 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 saying this all of this with so much love and to be honest i'm holding back a little bit because it is youtube but i don't want anybody to feel discouraged but if i were working with you as your coach these are some of the things that we would talk about these are some of the things that i would talk about and i would be asking you the tough questions how do you expect to make money when you're not doing anything you're not doing xyz and you're wasting time which is another thing people do they think they're taking action, but really if you look at what are you doing for like the four hours out of the day that you say that you're working on your business, maybe 20% of that is actual activity that might bring in revenue. The rest is just fluff, right? Scrolling on social media, it's a waste of time. Anyways, so if I were your coach, career coach, uh, business coach, um, these are some of the things that we'd be talking about. and. Um, holding up a mirror to your business and, and telling you exactly why your business isn't making money and how we can start to change that for you because you deserve to get paid for doing what you love. I firmly believe everyone does. So that's all I got for you today, everyone. <laughs> if you're interested in working with me for one-on-one -on -one coaching, career coaching, mindset coaching, developing your confidence, stop being a people pleaser and get out into the world and start creating the life you really want to be living, business coaching, I think I already said that. <laughs> Um, money mindset, all of these things. Um, apply through the link in the description box. And um, don't just send me a message about coaching because if you just send me an email or a message, all I'm going to do is send you right back to the link for the, to apply for coaching. So just go ahead and just visit the link in the description box and you just apply right there. And then I'll get back to you via email if I really think it could be a great fit for us to work together. Uh, oh yeah, and be sure to check out my new Soul Purpose podcast available on Apple, available on Spotify. I will leave the links to that in the description box below. More free content for you to get out there. Um, be serious about creating the life that you desire for ambitious women, entrepreneurial minded women. This podcast and this YouTube channel exists to support you. So make sure you actually do something with it. Don't just sit here and consume free content and not take action. Okay, action, action, action from an inspired place and from an aligned place is what will radically change your life. I love you all so much. I will see you in the next video. Bye.